it's Stephanie here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be continuing my pharmacy educational series in which I share my experience with University of Toronto's PharmD for Pharmacist program. I want to share some tips and tricks that I found helpful in terms of course planning and juggling full-time work in addition to school. If you're still unsure whether to apply for this program, see my previous video where I lead you through the factors to consider when deciding whether to go back to school as well as picking the ideal university for you. So let's get started with the questions. So how many courses should I pick per semester? My answer to that question is it really depends on your course and workload as well as your situation. As you know, the program is split into didactic courses as well as rotations. I'll get to the rotation planning part later on in this video. In terms of the didactic courses, they are further split into pharmacotherapy and non-pharmacotherapy courses. How much of a course load you can handle really depends on your personal situation. Do you have a family? Are you working full-time or part-time? Are you simultaneously enrolled in another program where you're completing two separate educational programs at the same time. The pharmacotherapy courses generally have a heavier workload compared to the non-pharmacotherapy ones. So when you're picking courses, I would definitely balance one or two pharmacotherapy courses with a non-pharmacotherapy one. Of course, when you're first starting out, you probably don't know how much you can handle yet. So I would suggest a trial and error approach. For the first semester, I would suggest taking the required foundations course, as well as adding on the critical appraisal and one pharmacotherapy course. The reason I suggest this is because you can take a look at the course outline uh, as well as the timeline to see if the deadline for the assignment, midterm exams, and final exam is something that you can handle. Worst comes to worst, you can always drop the course before the course deadline and uh, the tuition uh, refund deadline. I know the professors don't like this, but this is really the only way you can tell if you can juggle the course load uh, during your first semester as you're getting used to the program. I would suggest taking on a lighter course load and pacing yourself during the first year as you adjust to getting back to school and work at the same time. For example, for myself, when I first started off, I only took two courses per semester as I got used to juggling the school and work-life balance. However, after the first year, I was able to progress to three courses per semester. Three courses may seem like a lot, but as you get used to it, it actually isn't that bad. And I say that because the cool thing about doing a clinical degree is that you're able to apply the learning to your work right away. For example, when I was taking the cardiovascular pharmacotherapy course, we had to do our pre-reading on the newest diabetes guideline. And the next day, I was able to apply my learning from the guideline directly to my patients. As you're trialing out the number of courses that you're able to handle with work, it's also important to recognize the early signs of burnout and have a plan to proactively address them. For example, for myself, around the time of the midterm and final exam period where things can get a little bit more stressful, I uh, recognized that and I went to the gym more regularly, like I went five times a week after work, as well as did yoga to try to relieve the stress. Do you have any tips on timing your rotation as well as arranging them? In terms of rotations, you can either intersperse them with your didactic course, or you can time them so that you do all your rotations at the end of the program. The pros of interspersing your rotations with your didactic course could be that you're able to apply the knowledge that you get from these courses to your rotations right away. The other pro that I can think of is that because they're short five-week periods, it also increases the chance that your employer will be able to grant you a leave of absence to go on these rotations rather than if you stagger them all at the end of the program where you're going to be away for a longer period of time uh, where there is a chance that the leave of absence may not be granted. I would just caution you though to pay attention to uh, U of T's requirement for when you're allowed to do your first rotation. Currently as of August 20th 2022 you're only allowed to do your first rotation after you complete your foundation critical appraisal, and one pharmacotherapy course. One other thing to note about leaving all your rotations till the end of the program 
is that you're, you may not be able to stack them one after another. Therefore, the amount of time that you need to complete the rotations may be longer than the five times five week rotation, uh, depending on whether you're able to do that or not based on the current matching process. For example, for myself, I decided to leave all of my rotations after I completed my didactic courses. However, because I wasn't able to be matched so that all of my rotations were stacked one after another, I ended up having to do my rotation over a span of a one year period. Because of this, my employer was not able to grant me a leave of absence, so I had to leave my job in order to do that. But that was completely fine. I made the situation work for me, and I actually took this opportunity where I had gap times in between my rotation to visit my family back home in Asia, as well as travel to places that I've always wanted to travel to. In terms of rotation selecting, I know some people enter into this program with a specific rotation and pharmacist that they have in mind. If this is the case for you, then I would suggest reaching out to the OEE office as early as possible to try to arrange this so that you increase the chance of having this uh, rotation arranged for you. A big tip here is to pay close attention to your emails with regards to the rotation selection deadline. Because once you miss a deadline, it might be another half a year before you're able to enter into the matching process again. If you don't already have a specific rotation uh, site or preceptor that you want to do it with in mind, the variety of rotations that U of T offers include those that are in hospitals, community pharmacies, family health teams, and ambulatory clinics. What I really liked about the, the University of Toronto's program is that they also allow for international rotations. For example, during my year, international rotations were offered in France, in Cayman Islands, Hong Kong, as well as the United States in Tennessee. If international rotation is something that interests you, I would highly recommend it. It is a great way to explore pharmacy culture and practices in a different country than Canada, as well as build your pharmacy connections. I was able to be matched to the University of Tennessee's Health Sciences Center. I did a research rotation there for five weeks and I had a complete blast. During my time there, I was able to arrange for a shadowing opportunity at one of the most renowned children's hospital uh, in North America, the St. Jude's at Children's Hospital. I was able to shadow pharmacists there as well as other hospital sites to compare how pharmacy practice differs in the States compared to Canada. I also networked with some of the students there and as a result, I got invited to some of their lectures so that I'm able to see how pharmacy education there differs than in Canada. They also invited me to their social gathering events and I ate some really good barbecue. How long did it take for you to complete the program with full-time work? I would suggest first checking the program requirement. As of August 20th, 2022, the program requirement states that you must take a minimum of four courses a year and that the maximal amount of time to complete the program is four years. With the tips and strategies that I outline above, I was able to complete the program in two and a half years. Do you have any other tips on surviving work and school? In addition to recognizing early signs of burnout and having a plan in place to relieve your stress, for me it was working out and doing yoga, I would say that it's also important to maintain your social network. Make sure you still take time to meet up with your friends and spend time with family. Because this program is only offered virtually, you'll need to be proactive in building your social network with the professors as well as pharmacists. Take the initiative to reach out to your professors and other pharmacists within your cohort. I would say capitalize on that one week period where you guys are all on campus. Get yourself included in the WhatsApp group started by your cohort and go to their social gatherings that they may arrange outside of the uh, courses. This is a great opportunity to meet new students as well as to explore the awesome city of Toronto while you're on site. Another opportunity to reach out to your professors would be during their office hours. There are also some financial supports available for students. Check your email on the deadlines of when these are uh, available for application. While I was doing the program, there was a Shaping Student Life and Learning Fund that provided funding for travel expenses to international rotations, as well as travel expenses to 
uh, conferences where you're presenting a research project. They also have some bursaries available for students that qualify. My final thoughts on this program was that although it was a busy two and a half years for me, I thought it was so worth it. It was a great motivation to get up to date with all the recent guidelines. I also built some lifelong friendships with pharmacists from across the country. And I also had a one year vacation interspersed with my rotations at the end of the program. Through the connections that I built through the program, I was presented with a pharmacy specialist position right after I graduated here in Toronto. Because I loved the city so much after I uh, came here for my rotations during uh, my time in the program, I decided to pack my bags and move from British Columbia to Toronto and have been here ever since. You never know where life will take you. So my final advice to you is to keep an open mind and to expand your social network. If you have any other questions about the program that I have not addressed, or if you are also a fellow alumni of this program and just want to say hi, please drop me a comment below. I look forward to continuing this learning journey with you in my next video. Bye for now.